Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're making this super cute welcome sign, and I think you're going to like it. It's a wood sign with vinyl on it, and I use my Cricut to make it happen, so let me show you how we do that. The board I'm going to use is, I'm not even sure how big it is yet, we're going to measure that together, but we're going to use this board that has already been painted. It's been painted with a chalk finish paint, and I actually didn't do it. A friend of mine did this for me, so I'm just going to use this board. And so you can use any chalk finish paint, and then they even went back and kind of roughed it up with some sandpaper and kind of, you know, made it look a little more distressed. Super cute. Now we're going to measure it. Now here's the thing I have to show you. I do not want to measure from edge to edge of the board. The reason is I want my welcome sign to live right on this flat area. This board has like a rounded edge, so I don't want to worry about that. So I'm just going to measure from here to here where that levels off, and I'm going to do that on both ends. So let's measure super fast. So the width of this guy is eight and a hmm, sixteenth about. So I'm just going to call it eight inches, okay, wide. And then the length, I'm going to go all the way down to my little edge down there. And then all the way down here is 47 inches. So I know what size I need to make my template on Cricut. It's 47 by 8 inches. To start this project, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this grid off on my background. I've noticed in my videos that it gets a little confusing. So I'm just going to get rid of that grid. We really don't need it. And the way I'm going to do it is in this little square in the top corner, if you click it once, you go to inch squares. And if you cl click it twice, it goes away. So just to keep the video more crisp and clean, that's why I won't have a grid. But if you need the grid, keep it because it won't mess up your screen if you're not recording. All right, we need a template. So we need to establish a box where we know the words or the letters we're going to put inside will fit no matter how much we fill them up in that box or not. So we're going to make a template for ourselves. I'm going to go to shapes and I'm going to click on the square. Now I actually want this to be a rectangle because the board we're using is a rectangle. So if I were to resize it without unlocking the proportions, it only moves in a square. So I need to unlock the proportions and then come to the top. And because I know my exact measurements, I'm going to type them in. 8 inches wide by 47 inches tall. Yes, I'm putting in 47 inches. You might think that's crazy to do that. But I need to size my, size my letters the correct size. So I need this to be... 47 inches tall. Now, I don't have to work with it half in and half out of the screen because I can zoom. So what I'm going to do is come down here to the bottom left and I'm going to zoom in or zoom out, I should say, um, a few times until I can see my whole board. I'm also going to work with it in the middle of the screen because it's I struggle with working with things over to the side. I like things to be in the middle. Now I am going to change the color of this. So I'm going to go to the top here. I like to work with my templates as white bases and I just like to be able to see the line that is my template. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just for filming purposes another square behind this one. I'll show you why. I'm going to duplicate this guy and I'm going to stretch it a little bit and I'm just going to move it to the back. The reason is I've had some people tell me that they have a hard time following along whenever I have a white square or a white shape on the background. So I'm just going to turn this one to black and it's just going to be there so you can see the white piece I'm actually working with. So this black piece is just to create a line for you guys. But I wanted to show you because I was afraid if I didn't, it might confuse you. So you don't need this at home. It's just for you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, we are going to put text on. So let's click into the T for the text box and let's type the word welcome. But I'm going to start with the W. Now, this is going to seem kind of weird, but I'm going to go ahead and get the W sized for our board. So I don't even have to think about it after that. So I'm going to put this guy up here and then I'm going to stretch him out. I'm going to go ahead and establish my width and the font I want to use. So I know the font I want to use is Cake Basics because I just love that one. I think it looks really pretty. So I'm going to type in Cake Basics, and when it pops up, I'm going to select that. So you can see how pretty that font is. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure this guy is the right width, the right height, and everything for this spot where I want it, okay? Now I'm going to duplicate it. I've got my font chosen. I've got the size chosen, so I'm going to duplicate that. 
This is where I'm going to type the rest of my word. Now you can do the whole word at one time and you can resize it and all that good stuff, but it's just the way I do it. My brain works that way. So if you need to do all the word at one time, go right ahead. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to now click on this to, it, to edit it. I'm going to delete that W and with my caps lock button locked, I'm going to type in E and hit enter, L and hit enter, C and hit enter, O and hit enter, M and hit enter, and then E. I don't need to enter after the E. This is now the word I'm going to use here, but I want you to see something. I'm not going to put it underneath the W. I'm actually going to center these letters, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top where it says alignment, and I'm going to kill, and I'm going to click center. That will move my letters into the center. Now the other thing that we notice is this word hangs off of our piece. Now we should be able to shrink these letters up and make this fit just fine. And I'll show you how. If you come up here to the line spacing box, you can see this letter on top of a letter. This is where we can shrink the line spacing by using this bottom button. So I'm going to click this guy a bunch of times and I'll pause and let it catch up so I can see where we're at. So we still need to go a little more. Click it a bunch of times and then I'm going to pause and let it catch up. So I'm just going to keep clicking until I get these letters on the board. Now, I may be a little too big, maybe, but this seems to be working. Everybody seems to be in line and where it needs to go. The only thing I don't love is how big this M looks. To me, the M looks out of place. It may not to you, but it does to me. So I'm going to do a little adjusting, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on this again. I'm going to go up here where it says Advanced, and I'm going to ungroup my letters. By doing that, I can now click this M all by itself and make adjustments. I want to make this M thinner, but I don't want to make him shorter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the proportions and I can either use this little button and slide it in or because I don't want to mess with the height at all. Okay. I can come right up here and click until that M is about where I want it. Now I feel like that's probably good. And now I'm going to center him on this board. So I'm going to hold down shift, click the white piece behind, and then I'm going to come up here and align it center. Now we're back to where we're supposed to be. I do think this guy can move up a little bit. So I'm just going to arrow button him up a little bit. And that feels better to me. Okay. If it doesn't to you, if there's something that needs to adjust, you need to adjust, just do that. This is your sign and you can do all you want to it. Now, I want to stop for just a second and explain this part. I don't want to have to place each letter on the board at a time. Lining up one letter at a time would be very hard to get everything just right. So what I want to do is I want to line them up three letters at a time. So that means because I can use a 12 by 24 cut mat, I can do three letters attached together at one time and only have to line up one single letter. Okay, here's what you have to do to make that happen. We're going to select the W. I'm going to hold down shift and select the E. Still holding down shift, select the L. Now I'm going to come to the bottom right hand and I'm going to click attach. Now these guys are attached together and the Cricut knows I want to do those on one mat. Okay, now I'm going to grab the C, hold down shift, select the O, keeping shift held down, select the M and attach. Again, the Cricut knows I want to do those on one mat. Now, you do have to kind of know the size of your letters to make that work, but I happen to know that those three letters will fit on a 12 by 24 mat just fine. We're almost ready to make it. I want to get rid of this black box that we were using for reference. And I also want to get rid of the white one we use as our template. Why is that? Because we don't need to cut that. That's the actual board we're going to be putting this on. So I can delete that. Now you want to do something very important, and that is save your work. Always save your work, because if anything happens, if you have to recut it, if you want to share this with someone else so that they can make this project too, just make sure you click public when you save it, and you'll be able to do that. So now I have saved my work, and we are ready to make it. Now, before I go to my actual machine, I want to show you what this looks like when we click make it. So I'm going to go to the top and click make it. You're going to get a warning and it's going to say one of your images is too large or too high. Do you want to continue and use a larger mat? If you do, just say OK. If you don't, you can go back and edit. But I'm good with that because remember, we were using our 12 by 24 mat anyway. So I'm going to click OK. Now you can see my first set of letters are going to be cut on this mat. 
my second set on the second mat and that one E gets cut by itself. So I only have to line up three pieces instead of seven pieces. Make sense? It will when we get to it. All right, let's go make it. So I've clicked make it and now I need to tell it, or actually I've clicked continue from that last screen. I need to tell it what I'm using and I'm going to be using vinyl and it tells me that um, I do not need a tool in clamp A. This is kind of cool. It tells me I need the fine point blade in clamp B, and then I'm ready to load my mat. Now let's talk about the mat and loading. So the first thing I wanna show you is the vinyl that I'm gonna use for my sign. It is not ideal. I don't have another one, and I didn't wanna wait for it to get here, so this is the one I'm gonna use for the project. It's chalkboard vinyl, which is perfect for a lot of projects, and it's super sticky, and I think it's gonna be fine, especially since the sign I'm making is gonna go on a porch, like under an overhang. But if your sign was going to be in the weather or in the elements, you'd want to use a 651, like an Oracle 651 or something for permanent outdoor, okay? So make sure you're using a permanent outdoor vinyl unless you're like me and you're going to use what you've got and this will suffice. So this product actually comes on a roll and I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to place this on my 12 by 24 mat and I'm going to do it with the vinyl side up, obviously, because we're going to be cutting into the vinyl. So I'm just lining this up and sticking it down. Now my mat is not very sticky and I just don't have the time to stop and re-stick it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm laying my vinyl down and I'm using just a little bit of tape on the edges to hold that into place. That will be perfectly fine. But if you need to re-stick your mat, I have a video showing you how I do that. I just don't have the time today. Now I'm just going to place this in and press the load button. And that will pull that into place. So I've loaded this into the machine and this little flashing cricket light tells me I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna press cut. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up this side and I'm gonna cut away the vinyl I don't need that we also didn't cut into. So I'm just slicing this up. This is easier for me than trying to measure and figure exactly what size I need to put on the mat. I would have to cut this away anyway, so that way I know this is usable for another project and I can just put that out of the way. Now I'm just gonna show you this with one of these guys. We're gonna prep it to put it down, but you'll do the same thing with all three. I'm just gonna show you with this one how we do it. Okay, so I need to peel off any of the vinyl that we won't be using on the project. So I'm just gonna start on one corner. And we're gonna peel away this excess. And if you have any problems with your letters, just kind of rub over them. Get that to lay down so you can get it started. And holding it flat like this is really the easiest way to get it to do it. Just hold it nice and flat. Oops, see I had a letter that didn't come out. Put that one back down, get it started. And that should do it. Now I'm gonna have this little spot in the middle. Let me get my pokey tool. So I'm gonna to wanna to lift this little guy up too and bring him with me. What you don't wanna do is let your vinyl stick back down to its letters. Like you don't wanna let this land on top of a letter. As long as you can keep it off your letters, you're good. Can I help that a little bit? So that is the first part of our letters. Now we need to put the transfer tape on. So I'm using contact paper for this. I find this works really well. You can buy it really inexpensively and it's what we use even in class. It just works really great for me. So I'm just gonna cut a strip here and we'll place that on and then I'm gonna cut another little piece for down there. So I've removed about half. You can see here I've got half of it folded back and half of it not. I like to start something like that so I don't end up with this stuff everywhere I don't want it to be. Then I'm just gonna start up here in the top and just lay this down. You wanna try not to get air bubbles. Air bubbles can kind of mess you up. I feel like if you get air bubbles at this stage, you're much more likely to get air bubbles when you're laying it down. So you wanna try to get this on as smooth as you can. And with time and practice, this gets easier and easier. All right, then I'm just gonna slide some more of this away. 
and rub that down. Slide some more. Get that way you can see it. Rub that down. A little bit more. Rub that down. And that is my first layer done. I just need to add that little strip right there. When I have a small space like this to do, I can usually just do it by taking all of the backer off and just placing this down like so. This is also a great way to use up scraps. Now I will tell you, I wouldn't have pieced this whole thing. Like if I had to stop in the middle, that'd be fine, but I wouldn't do like three or four pieces of transfer tape. I like to keep it as smooth as I can or as solid as I can. So this piece is ready to go. Now I'm gonna leave it on the backer until I take it to the project and then we'll take it off the backer, but that's ready to go. I'm gonna do this same thing with the other two pieces and we'll get right back together. I want to show you something. Can you see these wrinkle lines? You might not can. This is a common issue with tightly rolled vinyl that you buy in like a spool or you might buy them in a package at different craft stores. This product we actually sell online here at our store. This is a Silhouette uh, chalkboard. Here's what I do. I do my best to peel this back past the bubbles, okay, and then put my hand under it and smooth that out as best I can. Those bubbles, they just will cause you to get kind of a buckle in your project and you don't want that. And if you try to rub on them while, they're, while the backer's still down, you can get wrinkles in your product. So you wanna kind of peel that back. Sometimes you can work it off just the side and just pull the air bubbles off the side and you don't even have to undo it. But on this one I did. Now the rest of the vinyl was not a problem. It was just where it was tightly rolled in the middle. That seems to be kind of common. Now it is time to adhere our letters to the board. I have called in my trusty sidekick. Old Vinny's here. <laughs> because this might take two hands to do this. So if you have a sidekick or a friend, you can get to help do that. I have kind of dry run laid this out so I can kind of see where I need to start. And I'm gonna start about a half an inch from that little border line that we measured. So that first W is gonna go a half an inch from there. And remember, because of the way I laid these out, I only have to line up this piece with this piece and the E. So I don't have to line up every letter individually. That would be horrific. Terrible. <laughs> it would, can you imagine? Terrible. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do three at a time. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. So now I'm gonna pick this up with the transfer tape or the contact paper is what I'm using. You can certainly use transfer tape, whatever your favorite is. And if for some reason it doesn't pick up at first, just rub it, burnish it down, just like so, till you get everything picked up. This E is probably not gonna pick up. My angle has a lot to do with that. I'm working around a tripod. You won't have to do that at home. That E ain't gonna come up. There he goes. You just have to work it. Usually once you get it started, you're okay. Slide it. And hey, looking good. Okay, so now you're gonna help me. If I were by myself, I would get over the top of this, but I'm not. So we're gonna do this together. That's some scary jump. Half an inch from the top. You can certainly draw some lines if you feel like you need to. Go that way a little bit, go toward the wall a little bit. That feels good. You can draw lines on your wood. If you need some reference lines, I am the queen of eyeballing. <laughs> and if you need another tool, you can burnish this down with a burnisher. You're not gonna need it. This is a very sticky product and it's going on a matte finish paint. So it's gonna stick real well. Now I'm just gonna lift this up, lift up our transfer tape and we're hopefully gonna leave those letters behind. Ooh, that's so satisfying, isn't it? Well, yeah, I'm rapping. You wanna do it? Go that way. Nah, I probably screwed up. No, go. Can't mess it up. Come on. It's sticky. Just go slow at new letters. At new legs. Look how beautiful. Keep it going. It's sticking really, really well. You're gonna ask me about this paint and I don't have the details. I didn't paint this board. It was painted for me. But he told me it was a chalk paint. I'm gonna have to tell you where to go with this one because I gotta eyeball that C and that M. Again, measure if you need to measure. Slide up closer to it. This is very crooked, so you need to go toward the wall. 
toward the wall, toward the wall, good. Now move the whole piece toward the wall just a little. Come back a little, if you're going too far. Right about, <laughs> go that way a little bit. I'm trying to pivot it. Hmm, there. I don't feel like my M is perfect, but I ain't gonna stress about it. Do I stress? Nope. If somebody walks up to my front door and goes, your sign would be lovely if your M wasn't, it wasn't crooked, they don't get to use the front door again. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get to come through the front door next time. Invite them through the basement or something. All right. Peel this off. You want to do your side? I didn't rub that down real good, so. And I'll don't tell you, you something. you need to rub it down good before you peel it? It is better to rub it with the contact paper on it because you take a less uh, chance of messing up your vinyl. So, yes, if you're going to burnish it, do it with your transfer tape on. So, any damage that you do will usually happen to the contact paper. That's a knot in the wood. You're gonna see, you feel it. Mm -hmm. That's gonna happen from time to time. You excited? Are you nervous? I'm curious as to why that's purple. Because <laughs> my mats were not sticky, so I used some tape to help stick it to the mat. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm what? Janky. Janky. <laughs> now, if you're from the south, you could stop right here. Welcome. You could. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. I guess you could. <laughs> All right. One last letter. You may need to hold that. And I can put this one down so it'll stay on the table. It's on the table there. One last letter. Line it up. So what if they go, dude, your E is whack. Then what do you do? I designed it that way. Did you know I made this by hand? Mm. How you like them apples? Well, I mean, that's one way of putting it. Instead of going, dude, wherever you bought that, they did that crooked. My E is not whack, by the way. <laughs> no, I just said if they said. That's what you say. I designed it that way. Did you know I made this by hand? See how I'm saying? I would never go to someone's house and point out their design flaws. Boom. Done. Let's go see it finished. There you go, guys. A welcome sign just in time for fall and your fall home decor. Now, you know the deal. If you make this, I want to see it. Head to our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com and share photos of what you're making with your wood and vinyl projects. Be sure to check out the vinyl we do have. We have some vinyl on our store, but we especially have this particular product, which is a silhouette chalkboard vinyl that comes on a roll. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was super fun to do. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Have a great one. Bye-bye.